Hello, my fellow spoopy spatulas. I'm Mr. Church. Today we're going to be building a creepy camp near Horn Red Estate over here, Garavan Estates right here. Um, and we're on this road. Right here, there's a little uh, special spawn area. And also, uh, big things can spawn on this road, including the Blue Devil, which fits perfectly to the build. We're going to be using this haunted bell tower from the Atom Shop. Now, unfortunately, even though it matches one of our building sets, they didn't make it so that we could actually use it with any building sets. There's one way in, and it's got a porch on it. You can't snap it to anything. There's no side doors on it. So we can't use it as an entrance to the church without some tomfoolery. So we're going to be using some tomfoolery. But first, let's try to get this lined up uh, better than your Zodiac. Am I right? And so... One time I had the misfortune of mentioning that I was a Libra in one of my videos and someone actually puked on my comment section because of it. Now, I didn't choose when I was born and uh, like even if you hate people talking about their Zodiac, that doesn't change what they are. Like you still have a Zodiac sign even if you think that there's nothing to it. So that's fun. Maybe you should examine yourself now what we're going to be doing is building a church using this bell tower as the church steeple now i'm gonna have to try to find a way in to the building through the tower even though they don't want us to uh use it in our builds uh which is confusing to me because in my opinion if i want like someone to use to purchase a product that i make I try to make it like functional and usable. So that's like just a little bit of advice. Maybe you could think about. Uh, we're gonna do a five by four uh, foundation and then stack up these two walls up here. And uh, you can get rid of this one here and also the other one right here. This is to get those two right there above. And now we're gonna do a little something special to bring in the walls on the bottom layer by one half a wall. So you're going to use a catwalk to snap this over by exactly one half of a foundation. And then you're going to turn this one into the abandoned wall mine with this line on the corner. It doesn't matter which one of those it is. When you burn this one, instead of uh, having a collision, it turns uh, yellow, which allows you to do this. And then you can move it back over, repair it, turn it into another wall. Do that on both sides. And then there'll be a central half wall opening in the center. And so when we burn this, there's a hole in the wall right here, which we're going to be using for our entry and exit of, of the church. And I'll build up around that to make it look like a destroyed opening, as best I can anyway. Now let's throw the walls up faster than you put your walls up. When someone tries to give you a compliment or tell you something good about yourself just because you're full of self-hatred it makes you uncomfortable hearing someone validate something about you and put these uh foundation stripe planks uh i'm using those just so i can line the foundations up so they're all going the same direction um, but anyway this will allow us to put in these concrete uh, stairs. And because we have extra foundations here, right, this one right here, will allow us to delete these foundations even though they're, they're supporting these stairs. Normally, uh, that's not going to work. It's not going to let you delete the foundation. But because we have that extra one, as you can see, it will let you delete these out of here. And now we can use a, um, a roof for our stage on the church. Uh, which will not have the annoying um, intersection issues around the edges that the um, that the foundation pieces do. You can fill these all back in. Again, using these striped planks, as you can see, it's really easy to see when it's lined up and when it's not. Um, and then I just replace them with some other uh, item later on. Um, and then I'm going to put these half walls in here. But for these two right here... Flip them the other way so that the the outside's facing the church. That way you can put a uh, wallpaper on. I, I flip them later on, but right here they're they're the wrong direction. So just uh, don't do what I do. And because you have those two by the stairs holding up the roofs, you will be able to just flip those out. 
um, without it being an issue. Go up by half a wall all the way around the structure, even on the back there. I mean, I do it later, but I guess you could do it now. Well, sometimes I like to do things out of order just so that it's more fun. You know how it can be fun later on to do something a lot more difficult. So the idea for this church is, um, I, well, I mean, people have asked, why, why haven't you built a church? You know, first of all, because a lot of people have made churches, you know, and there's an oversaturation. I don't want to just do, you know, something that a bunch of people have done and done well. Uh, but during spooky season, it's time for me to, to incorporate what I really feel about church building. Uh, just put those two walls in there temporarily. Once you have these, these roof pieces on, you can get rid of those walls down in there. Um, but it's this is going to be uh, a build that goes with my vampire build that I just uploaded recently. Um, this is a build that goes with this character. Uh, if you haven't checked out this video, I recommend it. I think it, it turned out really well. It's a really fun and unique build. It's not like a meta build, but it is in a series that I'm doing of fun, kooky, original, unique, off-meta builds like that so this this camp build goes with this character um so keep that in mind as we build it's gonna just be your run-of-the-mill church but it's gonna get spooky later i always build using warehouse walls and then switch them to what i want later because warehouse are thin and uh so they don't they're some because some of the new walls they have like bulging window sills and stuff like that and this allows you to just easily uh, fit stuff around it if you need to. They snap in easily, um, and they use just steel and wood to build, um, so they're not too expensive. Some stuff uses concrete. I don't want to use walls that use concrete if I'm going to be replacing them, because concrete doesn't grow on trees, but I guess steel does. That's, that's the moral of that story. So I'm going to be burning this, and I'm going to uh, be building a half... Uh, it's not a half wall. But I'm, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm putting a wall in here to kind of close off some of this stage because it's pretty deep. And I'm going to bring um, a wall out by half of a foundation. I'm going to remove this temporarily. And then this will snap right here. And this will snap right there. And then I'm going to put a temporary wall snapping downward from this. Which will allow me to take this catwalk off. And then put a fresh catwalk, which will allow me to snap a wall down like that, facing this way, which is important. So we can get that wallpaper on it, facing the sanctuary uh, of the church building. So do the exact same thing on both sides. It doesn't matter what kind of wall you use for your temporary wall. Uh, some people like to use um, funny walls. I like to use boring walls that will put people to sleep. Because um, it's a service that I offer to people with insomnia. Uh, this a special army uh, wall can be destroyed and it leaves no uh, chunks in the middle. Which is really nice. Um, because that allows us to shove this pipe organ through. And I'm going to make a custom pipe organ with lots and lots and lots of pipes. Because I like pipes. Because... Pipe is something that you can toot a little bit and you can just have it have it happen, something like that. So that's going to be fun. And when we repair that wall back there, uh, it'll look really awesome. Um, it looks really awesome now. You know, you don't, don't need to be mean about it. Like, it's just just doesn't look quite as good, good as it will, you know, but but it will look even better so these stupid slant walls they do go in sometimes when when you want them to but sometimes they don't and you might think to yourself those don't go in they do they do go in you're just looking at it from the wrong angle okay just keep it up you can do it i believe in you sweaty now uh i i switch these to a bunch of different kinds of slant but it doesn't really matter which ones you use as long as you like whatever's flickering through the roof outside <laughs> And this is just to show what wallpaper looks like behind there. Looks pretty good. I'm probably going to switch out what kind of wallpaper that is later on. Now it's time to incorporate part of the uh, vampire part of the build into this church. So, uh, we're going to build 
a pentagram on the floor. Now, I know what you're thinking. Um, that doesn't look like the pentagram that was on the floor at my church. Well, some people draw them differently, okay? You know, we don't all have your artistic spiritual ability. Um, but this is definitely um, something that I used to see a lot when I used to go to church. And so, um, obviously, it's just bringing back a lot of memories. Uh, so this has been a really nostalgic build in a lot of ways for me. Anyway, why, the reason why I'm building it... Oh, yeah, pick this rug up and move it once. Uh, because otherwise, when you move all this stuff, those, those uh, wires will break. But if you move the rug once, they won't break anymore. But what we're doing is I want to get it so that when you trigger that, just the wire is showing. And uh, that will be really cool. It'll be a really cool effect. And we're going to hide the rest of it. Now, I'm going to look at the map for no reason. Um, that's just to make sure, yep, there it is. The map didn't move. It didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go anywhere. You know, that's just something I do to remain calm. This is called the foundation merge. You have to be outside of free cam mode, standing on the edge of the foundation and looking downward at it uh, in order to do it. I do it a couple of times in this build, and I will explain it a little bit more later uh, when I do it. Um, but if you're still confused, I'm going to link a video by Nuka Violet that she made that pretty much covers all the merging in the game. And she does go over foundation merging in detail uh, in case whatever I'm talking about is a little confusing to you. Not sure why it would be, uh, except for the random stuff that's thrown in there like, oh my goodness, that macaroni was so good. Uh, which I know can make it hard to keep up with what's going on. Kind of like the kid, what the fuck is that? So let's not worry about that. We're just going to merge this down till it's as close as we dare get it to the foundation. Then you're going to pick it up and bring it back in here. And um, you can snap these in. The, it is going to be floating a little bit just because of the way the wires sag. Um, but that is as good as I could do. Um, and I volunteer... Uh, someone else to do it better and then maybe at my church fix fix my build for me and then I am gonna post it on my channel um, as if I did it so like oh yeah and I want to show you in case you need to repair all and so see how all that those conduits come back I wanted to make sure that you know like you can fix it if you have to uh, repair all um, at some point uh, you can still reset this by taking this foundation out, coming down here, triggering the spike board, which will make the wire or the uh, conduits in that bottom rug disappear. Um, of course, the wires will st will stay uh, because they're it's a magical pentagram. So it's mostly just it's like witchcraft. Now this is uh, where that hole is in the wall, and I'm gonna make a custom door that's laying on the ground, so it looks like the door got kind of smashed in. I'm not sure why that would have happened. Maybe something to do with, like, the summoning circle and and the, the occult vibes. But anyway, what I want to do is use the back of this chair as a handle on the table, which I'm going to use as the door, which maybe might, might not make sense to you, but you'll see what I mean. But the first thing we have to do is get the table... Uh, to be supported by the chair. Now, you can't just snap that onto the top of the chair because it'll say it's not supported. But you can create a, a fake support around. As long as that chair is slightly higher than those safes, it'll snap to the chair, but it'll be supported by the safes. Um, so, it, it'll say, you know, it'll be green suddenly and allow you to place it down, even though the support for the table is 100% that chair. See how right here the, the support is going to be those safes. Move it over slightly, pops up in the air, but it's still green because those safes being underneath it allow it to be placed even though it's definitely floating and not in like normally it would need support to be to be placed up like this. So I'm going to try to get this lined up underneath the chair so that when I drop merge the chair down, just the back of that chair is going to stick up through the table, which will create the handle for the custom door. So you're gonna come over here, you're gonna place down a pressure plate, and then you're gonna pick up the pressure plate and put it back down, which will push the button down. And then whenever you place an item on that, it's gonna merge the, the bottom item up into the top item 
every time you click and place. So you're just going to do that over and over until it sinks down like this. You can, of course, use sinky dirt, uh, but the pressure plate is a lot more predictable, and you can control what you're doing better. Uh, so I'm going to take this, and I actually switched it around and did that merge so that the chair was facing the other way, just so the handle was angled uh, the other way. I thought that looked better. And now you're going to center this on this foundation here and make sure none of the legs are hanging over the side of the foundation. Um, then you're going to take this out here, and we're going to do the uh, foundation merge yet again. And we're going to merge this whole chunk down until just the top of that. We can, and by the way, if you cover up that tree out here, uh, it'll come back next time you log in as long as something isn't snapped over it. So we'll still have that chair, uh, that, that tree later. Um, so go out of free cam mode. You have to stand your character right here. Look down. Now when you pick it up, if it stays green, you know it's going to work. Now you can hold X and hit R1 or L1 to move it up and down. Or that's the, the bumper buttons on Xbox. And it's just scrolling the mouse wheel while holding E on PC. That's, that allows me to move it up and down like this without it moving side to side whatsoever. And you're just going to move it very gently. Now you could do it like this, uh, but I, I kind of want it to be a little more flush to the ground. But it could you could do it like that if you wanted like a fat door. Now, if you go too far and it's sunken into the uh, foundation, you don't have to pick like the chair up and start over again. Like you don't have to pick this up and put it down and then remerge. You can actually just go the opposite direction. So like lift, lift the foundation up and it'll pull that thing out of there. And that is actually exactly where we want it. So that's that worked out pretty good. Um, and then once you have it like that, we can pick this up and bring it back inside. And that is a really good door in my opinion. I might add a couple more details to it later, but I really like how that looks. Now when we come in through here, through the destroyed bell tower, it looks like this opening was destroyed that got knocked down. As you can see, I've, I've put some pews down in here, but I'll mess with those later. Uh, right now, actually. That, that's a good time. So, um, for some of these pews, I put them up on the rubble, and then I'm going to place this over here and sink it down using the pressure plate merge, and that's going to add like a really destroyed look that I think is going to be really cute. Um, so let's do that there. And I tried to like line the pews up so that they were pretty good and then offset them some as if they got budged around but right now i'm doing another creating a temporary found uh uh support for a rug to be sitting on top of a filing cabinet um and see how i have rugs underneath this one that puts it up higher than the other ones which will guarantee that this corner one is the one that the rug snaps to <clears throat> now the reason i'm doing this is i want to build inside the the tower but because it's destroyed, everything we build inside there will disappear when we destroy it. And then after it's destroyed, you can't build on top of an item that's in disrepair. So, what we're going to do is build everything on top of items that the game allows to float. So some items, when you place them down, you can move the item out from underneath them. And that item will stay there. It's really great because it allows us to build inside destroyed prefabs. And I actually have a couple of builds on the channel where I do just that. Uh, so if you want to check those out, I'll link those as well. But as you can see, once we place this in here, when we destroy the tower, the, the filing cabinet and the carpets will remain. So we can actually make a floor of carpets. Um... And it's all being supported by the filing cabinet. And I'm going to show you what I mean right here. See these filing cabinets? If I pick this up, only the rugs will come with the foundation. Even though most floor items would come with a foundation. Um, oh, daddy, yes. Uh, Etc. But the, found, the filing cabinets are one item that is allowed to float. So, having everything be supported by the filing cabinets inside here means that everything will actually just be floating inside here. Which will be amazing, because once we destroy the bell tower, that those items will still be in there. They won't disappear like, like everything else. I think I've covered this pretty good. In fact, probably way too much. I think my mouth has been flapping like the eastern wind. And I don't really know what that means. So, let's just destroy the bell tower. 
And uh, as proof, the filing cabinet's still here, meaning those rugs are still here because they're not being held up by the, the tower. They're being held up by the filing cabinet. I want to recommend doing this while it's destroyed because that will guarantee that if the rug goes down, it's snapping to their other rugs and not to the uh, bell tower. Because if you're putting these rugs down in, when the tower is still healed, uh, and then you destroy it, if it snapped to the tower instead of the other rugs, it's going to disappear and everything you build on it will also disappear. Now I wanted to add a cute little church, so I decided I'll use the concession stand from the scoreboard with the letters from that same scoreboard, because they probably go together, right? <laughs> and then you can use them together? No. It eats the letters. It eats them and you can't see them, okay? So you can't fucking use the concession sign because the letters that go with it go inside it. So I thought, okay, I'll use these ones instead. And then I went log back in. It ate those too. And also, uh, there's a little bit of a limitation for how many you can put nearby. So first of all, I had to cut this cute little verse in half. Couldn't write the whole thing. And also, I can't just take these item, these letters and pull them out of there because when I click on them, it says there's too many items nearby uh, which means I can't edit it so that's terrible first of all the fact that when I logged back in it sucked half the letters inside it is bad enough so if you look in here there, you can see the letters are in there they just don't want to be they just don't want to be seen okay and even going in free cam I wasn't able to grab them all it was horrific so I made a temporary wall over here and then I even got rid of the foundation underneath it just so there'd be one less item over here. Then I brought the sign over here because I, you know, too many items nearby. I want to make sure this stuff is all by itself so I can get the maximum amount of stuff there. Then hopefully it'll let me, and it does. Now I can pick this up and it'll actually let me pull it out. But once an item has been sucked in by the sign, it will no longer stick on anything. If you try to put it on the wall... It, get, it goes inside the wall too so the only thing to do was to delete them and start over and then I tried blueprinting this to finish off the verse but there were too many objects nearby so basically the moral of the story is thank you so much for giving us letters we can't fucking use because we're not allowed to write sentences with them uh, and we're not allowed to uh, build with functionality using letters the way that letters were invented to be used, which is to write words with. So, like, if you ha have you read, like, a book? So, you know how those have a bunch of... they What they put... They, they put the letters in a sequence, and it makes words, okay? And so, I wanted to do that with these letters here. And unfortunately, there's apparently too many letters in the words, so you can't do it, okay? But you could write, like, hi or something, as long as you don't mind doing it over and over again. Anyway, I finally uh, did that enough times, and after logging in and out, uh, it didn't eat the letters anymore, but I did leave some letters missing, as if it had, you know, deteriorated over time. Um, and also, it was fine. It's okay, guys. It's okay. Uh, and I also wanted the ammo bench at my um, uh, camp, but it looks horrific and doesn't match the vibes, so I thought... I'm going to sink it down and put it, hide it in the lawn. I did that in my last build video, and I'll probably do it for the rest of my life until they give us a good skin for the scrap box and the ammo box. I did the same thing with the scrap box. I actually drop merged the scrap box into the floor in the church. Um, at this point in the build, uh, Vapid Valentine came by to give me some little last-minute touch-up uh, ideas, um, including the lighting that you see behind that organ. Uh, that was all her idea. And then recommending doubling up these roofs, which I really appreciated uh, doing. It was really fun. Thank you so much, Vapid Valentine, for uh, recommending doing this. I recommend it as well, because it, it does make the inside of the church look so much better. And not only that, but it's a really fun thing to do, because all you have to do is I think burn the outside ones, then you want to snap the ranch house roof flat so that when you turn it back up, it, it it's slightly lower so it doesn't flicker. But you have to make sure it's facing the right direction when you snap it in so when you flip it up. And you don't want it to be too low or it's not going to do it right. And you have to do the, the, the uh, bottom ones going up or it doesn't work and you have to sometimes snap it to the flat ones next to it. But otherwise, it's a treat. 
And if it doesn't work, um, just say it doesn't work, and then suddenly um, it'll magically work because Vapid Valentine's waiting for it to not work, and you're saying, uh, whining and bitching about it. That's what I did. Um, for up here, it was a little worse, um, but I'm not sure how it could have been any better in any way. Uh, but it actually, I'm really glad that I did end up doing it, he said, with gritted teeth and a headache. Because it did, it did look so much better with that in there. Because I was going for more of a contemporary style church. Like, it is based on uh, the church that I used to go to, of course. Um, and so, that's why there's that summoning circle. Um, there's, like, some skeletons and some dead bodies. Uh, lots of skeletons in the closet, that's for sure. Um, I wasn't able to build uh, Gossip, Slander, and Malice as they're not in the build menu. Uh, but maybe sometime I can incorporate that into the build if they give it to us later. There could also be like one where you're like judging people uh, for not being as righteous as you. I'm not sure if that's uh, something that's coming soon to the Atom Shop. But we can put that in the church if it comes out later. Um, maybe Pointed Fingers. Graham stopped by uh, for a ritual, and uh, Vapid Valentine uh, hogged him, took all his goodies, and uh, I waited patiently for for days. I went out here to milk the cow, which, by the way, Charlie is a male. Look up, if you think I'm making that up, that's in the lore. Look it up. Charlie's a male. What is Charlie's milk? And Graham... After being finally relieved of Vapid Valentine's nuisances, disappeared into the night. He he disapparated. And we frantically searched, and I think the franticness can really be seen in the way the pumpkin girl is zipping around here, but we couldn't find him anywhere. He had been raptured away without me being able to buy any suitcase plans. But while Vapid Valentine was here, she also made this really cool book. Well, she made half of it. We're going to make the rest of it here. But what she did was she drop merged that frog jar uh, into these two primitive uh, end tables. But you, you're going to have to do um, working from the uh, top down because of that. And what we're going to do is foundation merge this in for a little spell book. Uh, she recommended making like some kind of Bible and I said, we don't have that in this church. Um, so then she figured out how to make this. By the way, if you guys don't know who Vapid Valentine is, she's the person who made this. Uh, and if you haven't seen that yet, the link for her uh, channel is going to be in the description. And you should give her a sub and follow her because she makes amazing builds. And uh, is a huge inspiration for me. She's always uh, pushing me uh, to um, improve my craft. And uh, she really deserves more subscribers than she has but she's getting there and she will because you're about to go subscribe i just know you are that's why you're looking at me like that or is it because is my fly no my fly is down again well i was from when graham was here probably i don't know but anyway what i'm gonna do now is reverse merge this light so that we can have some lights up in the, the belfry so a bell fry, if you've ever been to Taco Bell, they don't have fries, actually. What's a bell fry? So take the conduit, and instead of this, put the red mirror ball light on it. And you can reverse merge by snapping it on top of the camp module. Now, a camp module is this thing over here. Uh, wherever you put this in the camp determines where you fast travel in, where people load in. So you can move that around as well if you don't like that you're ending up inside someone's foundation over and over again. Um, but just snap this all over the place, and it's going to be fine. And then when you put it in here, it'll go up into the ceiling. Um, and then I threw a little bit of a of a, of a power thing below to to power power it power it up. Yes, that's that's what it was. Uh, but I don't I don't know. It, it adds like a cool redness up in the top tower. That was also uh, a V idea. But I do want to take credit for um, some of this build. Like I, I put in the this this military freezer. Actually, I, let's put this in the this back hole area, so no one has to look at it. But this this back hole area is a great place to hide stuff that you need to have in your camp, but you don't want people to see. Like the freezer, which you have to have in all your camps if you don't want your shit to go bad. But this is the finished product, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. 
Um, I've always wanted to do a church build, but th there hasn't really been a good steeple, and that, in my opinion, is a really, like, poor part of this structure, you know? And I, so when I saw this, this bell tower, I was like, I have to incorporate that. And I like how I built it here on a hill a little bit, so you can see it coming up the hill. There's those rad lights in the windows, and also a bit of sparkle time in the second floor. And I boarded up some of the windows here. Uh, sometimes it'll let you place items on the, on the walls of destroyed objects, uh, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, so just try. Sometimes it'll let you. So uh, I also really like how the pipes on the side here come down. I don't know why you can power this thing up, because you can, you can activate the bell regardless of if it's powered or not. So I don't know what that does, really. Um, as you can see, I did around the sides here. Um, and I boarded up some of those windows. I put that exit door on this side since the entry is on the other side. Um, now that back roof is the red one. Uh, you could try doubling that one. Um, I didn't really want to mess with it because I was starting to get a headache with the roofs. And I think it's okay because we do have red roofs on the bell fry. So as you come in uh, closer, uh, you can see we have our sign here. And it did eat some of the letters, but I took some away intentionally and then put them back. Uh, we have, I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And I couldn't put the rest of the verse there, so I hit it somewhere else. But I thought that was edgy enough to, like, set the mood for people coming in. Oh, good, this guy has black dyed hair and those little stud belts and maybe some earrings and such. Um, you know, just so people know, like, I'm edgy as fuck, bro. Um, so, yeah, then I'm gonna, like, read, uh, like, a bunch of occult tomes and such during third period but as you come in here i think it's a really great vibe i added those conduits to that door and i think it it really was the chef's kiss and i really love how that door turned out over here there's like a i put a bunch of those um those like red uh potion things which is like blood right and yes there's a lot of midnight mass vibes going on in here uh i really loved that series and and it was definitely some of the inspiration for this uh, there's that book, the spell book, and I put candles on in around that. We have that uh, thing. I made a cross out of the space um, piece of the letter bit. I, I don't know. These aren't even words, right? But you guys know what I'm saying. Here is a little coffin to kind of tell the tale of what we're reanimating here with our little uh, ritual. Um, and yes... I know what you're wondering, will my grandmother approve of this camp build? And yes, she definitely will. There's no way that she's going to be disappointed at all if she found out about it. Um, and back here, uh, these are those hidden lights. There's a mirror ball, which wasn't spinning when we started, but now it is. And the uh, cycling light, which is the dim red uh, to kind of give that glow. And it really uh, makes those pipes shine. It really is a cool effect. I put some cobwebs up in the corners. Uh, those are really a really cool item. Sometimes they look a little weird. I wish they were like a whiter color, uh, but they are very cool. I really like how this looked. Uh, as you can see, I tried to line the pews up and then mess them up. So, And then there's another rubble sunken down on that pew over there. Um, but I really like how this turned out. Um, and I switched that middle area to carpet. The dingy, nasty carpet. Uh, which... Um, probably wasn't Vapid Valentine's idea. And then up here, there's the rest of the verse, and hell followed with him. Just so, no, you know, people know not to fuck with me, um, because I've been bullied enough. So I'm going to keep writing a bunch of, uh, you know, occult symbols in my, one of those little, you know, those speckled notebooks that I have. Anyway, in this middle area, up the tower, you might say, don't climb that tower because we think it's haunted, and then you come up here, oh god, I wish it was just haunted. And then up here is where Vampire lives, it's kind of his little roost, it's a woman, and I don't know why I said his, uh, but there's a goat head, which is actually a sheep squatch that spawned outside, salt, a chunk of blood chunk, and my other pair of clothes. There's some Rose for Miss Emily shit going on with a bed, I don't need you to worry about it, and it's not something that you can be scratching your head about later either. There's uh, the red light coming in through there. 
and uh, boy does that look so good. You can't even see the fact that that mirror ball is spinning at all because it wasn't spinning earlier and now this one is as well. So there's a party going on up here. That's good. That's really ruining the vibes actually. Um, that's really putting a damper on what was supposed to be a really edgelord time. Okay, so I'm going to fix that later and it's going to be fine. Uh, let's get the fuck out of here though once I get stuck on the windowsill, which happens a lot because of these protruding uh, uh, buck teeth that I have. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in seeing more of what I've been building and making, consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. And uh, hit the like button if you liked the video. And if you dislike the video, uh, you can hit the dislike button. I don't know why you would. Like, you, some people can just click off the video. Some people have, you know, you have to make your feelings hurt. I get it. You want to you want to feel validated. And if you need to do that, go ahead and do that. Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members for your support. Um, I really do appreciate it. It means so much to me. And that is the number one way of supporting me. So if that's something you're interested in, the link for my Patreon is also in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.